I, I bring that up only because I'm just I just opened up my work email for the first time since I left the office yesterday afternoon. Now, I probably should pay a lot more attention to it because people are always emailing me and sometimes it's work-related, albeit, you know, you leave the, you leave the office, you'd like to sometimes leave the job behind. Although, one of the things about talk radio is we are always, you are always involved in show preparation, no matter where you happen to be or what you happen to be doing. But I'm looking through my emails, and uh, if I didn't get back to an email that you may have sent me yesterday, I apologize I'm just starting to look through these and see what's available here. In fact, I've got two emails, two or three emails from an old friend of mine, and he's writing me from Harrisburg, Pennsylvania. And uh, he's telling me that uh, the host he listened to, it, uh, he listens to a WHP in Harrisburg, which is a legendary station. He says, the guy bores me. We need you here. <laughs> it snows there, though, a lot. I'm not really, really all that interested. Eight minutes after 8 o'clock. Bill Colley with you on Top Story on News Radio 1310. KLIX and NewsRadio1310.com. A snow job coming in about 90 minutes. Well, just under 90 minutes. Mitt Romney is calling a news conference of sorts in Salt Lake City at 9.30. And initially it was thought Mr. Romney might say, I'm a candidate and I'm going to enter the California, because he can still get in on some deadlines in some late primaries. And there's been a lot of talk among the so-called Republican establishment, whatever that happens to be, that good gosh, if only Mitt got involved, if only Mitt was here, uh, then we wouldn't have to worry about this big bully Donald Trump. That the establishment believes that if Mitt Romney happened to be running, that people would go, oh, goodness gracious, I didn't know. Thank you. I'll go vote for Mitt. He only lost twice. 2008, uh, lost in the primaries. 2012, Lost in the general election, came off as Casper Milktoast and politically correct and offended the base. But other than that, good golly, we've got to go vote for him a third time. Or if we didn't vote for him the first couple of times, we better vote for him now. Doesn't it, doesn't it just kind of catch you a little bit by surprise that when you, you <laughs> they just, they don't get it. It's like they're, they're so absolutely clueless as to what the American public is thinking and what it's going through. Well, the latest is, and I started seeing details come out on this last night, a friend of mine from all the way out in Alabama, you want to talk about somebody tracking the news across the country, she sent me a link. Romney is not announcing that he's a candidate. No, he's likely going to announce that he's now backing Marco Rubio, which will make people go, wow, golly gee, then I must vote for Marco, because Mitt Romney wants me to vote for Marco and the Republican National Committee. Therefore, Marco is my man. He's going to endorse Rubio, and he's going to denounce Donald Trump. And? <laughs> so you've got this political has-been, who is the political equivalent of a cold bowl of oatmeal, and he's going to be coming out in about 90 minutes and telling people how they have to, uh, to get themselves straight. And there are people in the Republican Party who actually believe that you are going to listen to that if you're a Republican, that it is going to have some sway with you 10 minutes after 8 o'clock. Bill Colley on Top Story this morning on News Radio 1310, KLIX, NewsRadio1310.com. Now, don't, don't quote me on this, but I believe in a few minutes we'll see Keith Thompson from Idaho State Police. We'll be getting an update from uh, ISP a little, little later in the program today. But otherwise, Top Story really is Mr. Romney and uh, the upcoming event on Tuesday in Idaho. Idaho, of course, having a Republican and Constitution Party primaries on the 8th. Now, that will be Tuesday. For those of you who got confused and showed up to vote on uh, on Tuesday this past week or this week, it'll actually be next week. But at least now you know where you have to go, and that's the key thing, isn't it? You don't need directions. If you've already found your polling place, this will be easy come next week. There is an advantage for candidates not named Donald Trump in Idaho, and that is this is not a crossover primary. You cannot, as a Democrat or an independent, as you can in some states, go vote in the Republican primary. So this is exclusively Republicans. And in Oklahoma, where they have the same rule, Mr. Trump lost. Just food for thought. We have a caller with us. You're up next. You're on KLIX with Bill Colley on Top Story. Morning, Bill. Hey, on this Mitt Romney deal, I'm, uh, I'm willing to bet some pretty substantial money that if he does come out and, you know, bashes Trump and makes his, uh, his uh, Rubio endorsement and whatnot, that uh, sometime today or tomorrow, Trump will have an even better, bigger news feed that will suck the wind right out of this announcement, and it will mean absolutely nothing. All they're doing is fueling his fueling his flames, and I don't particularly think that's a good thing, but 
they needed to learn to just sit down and shut up. And and uh, <laughs> every time they speak, every time they speak, Trump's numbers go up. So. I, I and I thank you for the call. I, I remember an old Superman episode that I watched when I was a kid, and there was this bad guy, and what he was trying to do is he was he, he had developed an ability to absorb energy, and he just keeps absorbing energy from anyone who tries to stop him. Think Donald Trump. And in the end, Superman stops him because Superman has so much energy, the guy gets overloaded and it explodes. Uh, but my, my point in all of this is, is that Mitt Romney is not Superman. In fact, when I look at Mitt Romney now, all I see is a Republican version of John Kerry. I know that's a sad commentary, but that's all I see anymore. Uh, you, could almost, if you, you could almost put John Kerry's voice into Mitt Romney's body, and who would know the difference any longer? And, and, and as our caller said... They're only bringing more attention to Donald Trump, and they're only telling Donald Trump, all right, the swells in the Republican Party don't like this guy, and uh, the great unwashed out there should follow our lead and, and vote against him. In other words, we don't like you either. We don't like the base. We can't stand you. We think you stink. We think you're stupid, uh, and we'd like you to come back and finish mowing our lawn. <laughs> it's not going to happen. It's not going to work. It's 813. Bill Colley with you on Top Story on News Radio 1310, KLIX, and News Radio 1310.com. A couple of fascinating stories I've got to share with you, though, quickly. Immigrant student who threatened Trump is getting deported. This is from the Daily Caller. An Egyptian immigrant in the U.S. on a student visa is getting deported after making threatening remarks about Republican presidential candidate Donald Trump. Imad al-Din Ali Mohammed Nasser al-Zayad. Boy, if he was a football player, how would they get that across his shoulders? Was arrested three weeks ago after police say he posted a death threat against Trump on Facebook. I am willing to kill Donald Trump and serve a life sentence. The whole world would thank me for doing that. He has been deported. Uh, get this, though. This is what I found most alarming. He was in the United States attending a flight school in California. Attending a, The last time I've heard about Egyptians attending flight schools in this country, a guy named Mohammed Adda. Uh, that was about uh, 15 years ago, September. You may remember that situation. Why are these people even here? <laughs> well, he's only going to flight school, and we've never had any problems with that before. Well, okay, with the exception of 3,000 of our countrymen dead. Uh, what a wonderful thing this is, though. And then another one that I came across yesterday, this one is what really surprised me. Tavis Smiley. He's a black talk show host, a very liberal guy. I, I have to admit, though, I used to listen to his, his, his talk show on Sunday nights. I would be driving home some Sunday nights late, and I would be listening on the radio, and often he would be joined by Dr. Cornell West, who, if you don't know who Cornell West is, uh, you may have you may have seen a TV program when you were a kid that was based on, well, it's actually an old uh, shorts from the movie days in the 1930s and 40s uh, called Our Gang. Cornell West got his start on Our Gang. Uh, you can tell by the hair. Uh, Cornell West says the talk show is Ote. 815, Bill Colley with you on Top Story on News Radio 1310, KLIX and News Radio. I kid you not. Look at the guy's hair. I mean, Ben Wallace, who played for the, the Detroit Pistons, it was the same way, the same mess. It's like these guys have never seen a barber, apparently, in their lives. But Tavis Smiley says he thinks a lot of black Americans are going to get on the Trump train. This is from USA Today. The conventional wisdom, he says, is that she, meaning Hillary Clinton, has the black vote on lockdown. She might be wrong. And he says, all right, she's got the Congressional Black Caucus, many big city black mayors, other notable black elected officials from California to the Carolinas. Additionally, he says... She's also getting not-so-subtle signs of support from the president, even though the president said he wouldn't get involved this early in the race. And then he says this, Charisma, charm, and likability aren't transferable, and he's referring to her. While the chance to elect the first woman president is indeed tantalizing for many in black America, specifically, it's not exactly the same as watching the first African-American family take up residence at 1600 Pennsylvania Avenue. Second, the number of everyday black voters who we assume will dismiss Trump because of his anti-immigrant and anti-Muslim attacks may well be inflated. In other words, those people don't like the competition either for jobs from all of these people. You know, it, why would why would a black man who's been working hard all of his life appreciate someone coming in and undercutting him on the job? He'd be no different than, than you would be or th than I would be in that situation. And then Smiley says this, I have been taken by myriad conversations, meaning many, I've had with black folk who don't find those comments by Trump necessarily are automatically disqualifying. Ooh, this could be a big deal if, if Trump starts to pick up some votes over there. Meanwhile, Cornell West, Dr. West, appearing last night with Sean Hannity talking about this very issue 
Uh, West says his buddy Tavis is losing his mind. The sad moment is this. We've got, on the one hand, a milquetoast neoliberal in Hillary Clinton. Milquetoast neoliberal. Milk neoliberal. <laughs> tied to Wall Street, tied to big money. Then we've You're got right. a dangerous neo-fascist. With, the only way out is the genuine populism of my dear brother Bernie Sanders. Bernie, Sanders. you want the, so you want the communist. He's a genuine populist. Oh, no, he's, he's a, a genuine uh, populist. He's, a, he's, a, he's an admitted socialist. Well, he calls himself a socialist. Well, he is a socialist. No, but I'm a genuine democratic socialist. Right, but here's the thing. He's a genuine populist. Let me ask this He's question. not calling for the limitation of private property. He's not calling for national. You know how you call me, Brother Sean? Yes, exactly. And you call our friend Tavis Smiley, Brother Tavis? Yeah, that's right. All right, Tavis actually said that Hillary better be careful that the black vote could go to Trump. Well, no, no, the black won't, won't go you to Trump. You know why they shouldn't? No. Trump scapegoats the vulnerable too much. No. Precious Mexicans, Muslims, women, you can't get away with that. Can but I ask you a question? On the other hand, I can say this. Hillary doesn't have enough gas in her tank, and that's what the only person who can beat Trump is Bernie Sanders. Look at the poll. <laughs> well, he's not going to get there. Number two, I'll get to my caller in just a moment. Here's a thought, though, folks. I don't sit around when I go vote and say, hmm. Well, I'm voting for all of those people who live in other parts of the country and who have different colored skin and go to different churches or mosques. No, I go vote my interests. That's where Dr. West is, is wrong. I think that he, he just doesn't realize people are going to vote their pocketbooks. You're up on w, or rather on KLIX. You know, I haven't done that in about a year, but uh, uh, once in a while it slips out. Uh, you're on the air on Top Story. <laughs> you're not sure where you're at today, Bill. That happens once in a while. <laughs> well, it happens to me every morning after I roll out of bed. <clears throat> but, you know, I, your comment just got to me and said, wow, we finally figured out how to get people actually deported. They've got to threaten somebody with some importance. <laughs> if, they, if they threaten schools and everything else and our little children, that, that's okay. But if you threaten somebody with importance, you're out of here. So we got to figure out how to get more of them to threaten people of importance. I, I, and I, I'll tell you what, I think that uh, that in this case, they got this guy likely just in time. I, and, and I know he says, well, I'm just, I was just joking, but pretty strong stuff. And uh, the flight school, uh, the reference to the flight school is what got me. All you need is one of these kooks up there screaming Allah Akbar in an airplane and then crash landing it in the middle of a rally and you've got thousands more dead. Thank you much for the telephone call, sir. The reason I almost slipped out the old call letters, I mentioned my friend writing me from Harrisburg this morning. And, of course, he referenced a couple of my old radio stations. You know, east of the Mississippi, they all have strange call letters. Well, that's because they're strange people. Hey, Keith Thompson expected a little bit later in the hour from Idaho State Police. Also, I've got a couple more comments, too. Uh, one Republican U.S. senator may be backing Hillary Clinton. Not Crapo, and it's not, you know, it's nobody in our part of the country, believe me. It'll have to be somebody back on the East Coast, east of the Mississippi. Probably Mitch McConnell. We've got details on that on the way. Oh, I like that. I'm a big fan of Charlie Brown growing up. Maybe because I always felt I had a kinship with him. Never got any rocks, though, when I was trick-or-treating. That would leave you traumatized, wouldn't it? You'd end up being a liberal and screaming that you were a victim. 824, Bill Colley with you on Top Story on News Radio 1310, KLIX, and News Radio 1310.com. I have a telephone caller who's been looking uh, desperately to get in touch with us. Well, I won't say desperately, but eagerly, and we'll go back to the telephones for just a moment. That number, 736-0300. And you're on the air. You're on KLIX. Hello, good morning. Yes, sir. Go ahead. Yeah, you were uh, just talking about the uh, black vote going to yeah. Seriously believe that could happen? This guy does. Tavis Smiley, and of course he would be a black man and talks to a lot of other people who are black, and I think that he says, your, your line's breaking up, by the way. Please call back if you get a chance. If Smiley says that, then I take it as, as, as potentially true. He's not, and he's not backing Trump whatsoever. It can't stand him. We have another caller with us. You're on the air on News Radio 1310, KLIX, and NewsRadio1310.com. Bill, do, do you ever have you ever gone to the Conservative Political Action Conference, CPAC? Uh, I've been list, listening to you, but I've been watching them. And KT McFarland was just on with the Heritage Foundation. But have you ever gone to CPAC? Been invited twice, never been able to make it. Always had to, uh, another another. Uh, Thanks for the call. Always had another uh, obligation. 
even though I, for many, many years, for seven years, I lived just two hours away from that conference. And uh, my friends Phil Kent and uh, John Mulhall and some other people are regular attendees and always wanted me to come over and spend a couple of days there. K.T. McFarland, by the way, not a true conservative in my view. When I was uh, hosting a radio talk show in upstate New York 10 years ago, we had a candidate running against uh, Miss Hillary for U.S. Senate. His name was John Spencer, a Vietnam veteran. Uh, he commanded troops in Vietnam. He'd been the mayor of Yonkers, New York, the only Republican elected mayor in that city in, in decades. And he managed to close all of their debts. And he was running as the Republican nominee because he won the primary against the man that the, uh, the, the moderates had selected. So K.T. McFarland got in and then challenged him essentially as a third-party candidate and handed the U.S. Senate election over to Hillary Clinton. K.T. McFarland is a phony. She's just another one of these paid talking heads on Fox News that you're supposed to believe and you're supposed to believe as a conservative. Uh, Not the case. Just like Karl Rove. Just a big bag of sweat is all that man is. 826, Bill Colley with you on Top Story on News Radio 1310, KLIX, and News Radio 1310.com. I want to remind folks today, uh, speaking of uh, <laughs> big things, big animals, uh, sometimes you need to get them processed. High Desert Meat Processing processes one animal at a time, and what you bring in, and this is the key, is exactly what you're going to get back. Darren Van Horn, the owner of High Desert Meat Processing in Twin Falls, he's been doing this for nearly 35 years. You can visit High Desert Meat Processing on Facebook, and they have reviews of customers there, very good reviews. Or give High Desert Meat Processing a telephone call, 734-9949. High Desert Meat does in-house smoking, and nothing, nothing is shipped out. And they do specialty meats, too, as well. And who doesn't love beef jerky or pepperoni, salami, summer sausage, kielbasa, brats, breakfast sausage, and the like? USDA approved. Darren works closely with local beef growers and their programs to ensure quality meat. The number again, 734-9949. I was telling you earlier, Chuck Todd says he knows of at least one Republican U.S. senator who is going to go endorse Hillary Clinton because the senator cannot stand Donald Trump. Todd speaking with his fellow uh, his fellow commie libs yesterday on MSDNC. The host of the program is Brian Williams, liar, liar, pants on fire, like he can be objective in this. Rachel Maddow. Gene Robinson, and you hear Nicole Wallace here talking before Chuck Todd jumps in. They're strategic for that, Gene. But this is a totally different thing. I heard a real, real speculation today from very informed people that at least one Republican Senate incumbent, if given the choice, might publicly endorse Hillary Clinton. A a Republican incumbent senator. Incumbent senator. There's at least one that I've heard that could end up doing that, making that choice. Mm -hmm. Not because they want to, but because they need to send that message. Look, there's a bunch of them running for re-election in blue states. Yeah. Oh, my. (laughs) You know, Donald, we want you to sign this pledge that if you don't get the nomination, you won't run third party. But if you do get the nomination, we'll all back you. Oh, it appears you're going to get the nomination. Well, then, uh, Donald, we're going to have to find another candidate and maybe create a third party of our own. You can't trust these people. I have been dealing with establishment Republicans especially in media now, for 30 years. And I have found them, for the most part, to be the most self-interested people. Their interests essentially end at the tips of their own noses. And then they they hold up the photograph of Ronald Reagan and say, hey, uh, I like Ronald Reagan. You like Ronald Reagan. Vote for me. I'm a conservative. Sure, sure, sure. I'll tell you whatever you want to hear. Vote for me, and then I'll send your jobs to China. And all my buddies over on K Street in Washington at the lobbying firms will make millions and millions of dollars off of it. And then they'll give me some of that. We call those donations. Some people call it bribery, but no, 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 no. The bribery would be against the law. And we here at the GOP establishment always respect the law. Or at least we should, and we hope that you do. And please don't ever have a revolution, because that would be against the law, too. Uh, Just follow what we say, and here's a little salt, Peter, to go with your food. 8.30, Bill Colley on Top Story on News Radio 1310, KLIX and News Radio 1310.com. There may not be a Hillary Clinton nomination. We'll talk about that a little later, too.